our friend and semi-hero Roger Wilco as he rockets back toward his home planet Xenon, which he hasn't seen since Space Quest II. Having successfully rescued those two ingrates from Andromeda, he decides a pit stop on Magmetheus is in order. During the descent to this cosmic canteen, he is unaware of the interest that has been generated regarding his fate. of his position, Master. Off to Magnetheus with you then. It is time for Wilco to meet the fate which I have crafted for him. As our story begins, we find the aluminum mallard parked outside a seedy spaceport bar. We join Roger as he relates one of his greatly exaggerated tales of adventure. The aliens are only too happy to listen, as long as Roger is by. See, there is this deadly root monster, a ferocious swamp creature, and a Labion terror beast to contend with. Then I had to outsmart another of Bohal's gorillas and steal the shuttle so I could penetrate the asteroid fortress and pull the plug on that corpulent creep once and for all. Yeah, all in a day's work for a guy like me. Anyway, I aborted the launch and jetted out of there in an escape pod. I crawled into the sleep chamber, and the next thing I knew, I woke up in a trash freighter. Yeah, things didn't look too good, but I blasted out of the freighter in an old jalopy I resurrected from the rubble. What I didn't know was I was being tailed by Arnoid the Annihilator, that one-man collection agency from hell. He nearly had me at a tourist trap on Flea Butt, but at the last minute, I wiped him out. After that grueling experience, I thought I'd take it easy for a while. That's when I got the distress call from the two guys from Andromeda. Ever seen those guys? Jeez, what a couple of geeks. Anyway, before I knew it, I was face to face with the most ruthless band of outlaws in the galaxy, the Pirates of Pestilon. I was lucky to get out of there with my skin, not to mention those two ingrates I dropped off on Earth. Why I risked my neck for those bozos, I'll never know. Yeah, I think I'm overdue for a vacation. I'm not even going to think about anything brave or heroic for at least, uh, six months. I'll be kicking back on some sandy beach soaking up x-rays. Heck, maybe I'll even check out Roberta Land. Are you Roger Wilco? Uh, yeah. Please come with me. Hello, Roger Wilco. Surprised to see an old friend? You have no idea how special this moment is for me. This is no chance encounter, I can assure you. I have this one loose end to tie up before I begin my reign as the supreme being of all that exists. I do not like to lose. You are a blemish on what would otherwise be a perfect record of domination, terror, and invincibility. Besides, I'm still a bit miffed about that asteroid deal in Space Quest 2. Anyway, to relieve the pain of my humiliation and to prevent you from being a pain in my... future, you must die. It's been nice seeing you one last time. Then, do the dirty deed. You go left and split them up. Mr. Wilco, follow me and do exactly as I say. Let's move! Hey, I want...
want to know what the f Listen, I can't explain it all to you now. They've got a beat on our coordinates. We've got to move fast. We gotta do this fast. Shield your eyes! Jump into the time rip! Do it now! You've got to! If I take the time to explain, we're both parking lot pizza! You'll understand soon. Now oh, where am I? You wonder aloud to non-existent auditory organs? This place sure looks homey. Hey wait, this looks just like Xena. It is Xena. It's, it's, it's really a pile. Along with the changes induced by an armed conflict, the city looks different, more modern with a heavy dash of post-disaster seasoning. Casually glancing at the status line, you happen to notice that you're in Space Quest 12. What's happened? Who was that guy with the overdeveloped hair dryer? Why did you let yourself be talked into jumping into some strange shimmering hole? Why are you talking to yourself? These incredibly intriguing questions will quickly be forgotten with barely an electron stirred in that well-armored orb atop your shoulders. <laughs>